The commercial real estate bust has now entered its second phase. The first had everything stuck in place, frozen with everyone just hoping somehow it would all just magically work out. Well, that didn't happen. And now we see evidence that is already transitioning into that next step. We've got reports from inside sources. There is data from the Federal Reserve on banks that are backing up those reports. And both of them clearly show how the situation has actually shifted. Now, it's still generally quiet, but that's on purpose. That's what the second stage is really about. Those who are heading for the exit right this minute are doing so discreetly because they don't want to make any waves. They don't want to set off a stampede. There's still going to be a lot of extending. There's still going to be a lot of pretending, but the margin to do so is running out and reality is finally starting to intrude. Banks are beginning to sell. And for a lot of property owners, the time is up. As one of those insiders told the New York Times just recently, if we think it's bad now, it's going to get a lot worse. Another insider in a completely separate report said, quote, the general public does not have a sense of the severity of the problem. And we don't. And that's a big part of it for everyone on the outside looking in. And that's where it can get really tricky. Now this whole CRE bus can go relatively smoothly. Banks take some hits. Investors who are too drunk on the bubble will get smoked, but otherwise the world continues spinning and the economy only feels a small drag. But even then, even in that best case scenario, it's going to get pretty dicey. There's also the non-trivial chance that given the behavior we're already observing, the data that's already coming in, this could become a more serious and impactful bust. So we'll go over these latest insider reports and the bank statistics. And when you see the bank statistics, you'll see exactly what I mean about the, the bust transitioning into its next stage. But first, the Federal Reserve wants you to know that all of the country's biggest banks are perfectly fine. Even under the most adverse scenarios for the economy, commercial real estate, residential real estate, and everything, all of the big banks passed the stress test with flying colors. Reuters reported big U.S. banks survived a hypothetical 40% drop in commercial real estate values as a part of the U.S. Federal Reserve's annual health test, easing fears about the banking sector as landlords struggle in a higher for longer interest rate world. As risks mount in the CRE space, investors were looking to the Fed's stress test to assess how exposed America's lenders are at a time when pandemic era work habits continue to empty office towers, sending vacancy rates past historic peaks to a record 20%. And it isn't until the last paragraph of this Reuters article that they actually get to some useful information. Yes, we know all of the big banks are well prepared for anything that's coming. That was the last crisis a generation ago. They all created fortress balance sheets. They all have tons of liquidity and access to liquidity. It's not the biggest banks because the stress test only applied to the 31 largest banks. And there are at last check thousands and thousands of other banks throughout the United States system. So it wasn't until the last paragraph of the Reuters article that they finally said, one criticism of the Fed stress test by analysts and just common sense was that it did not include the regional banks that hold the majority of CRE loans. Now, that's not the Fed's fault. The Fed's stress test was designed with the last crisis in mind, only looking at the largest banks. There is no mandate to look at smaller banks. They are doing so on an individual basis as they come up in bank call reports and examinations. But as far as public information, we are left in the dark about everything. Well, not completely in the dark. We had been left in the dark over the last year as Extend and Pretend was in full swing and full bloom. But more and more, we are getting information, we're getting sources, we're getting data that shows things are beginning to move. And the stuff that we get isn't all that encouraging. Now, it isn't worst case yet. It's not time to get all upset about what's happening. But as far as how things could be going, they're trending in the wrong direction. Let me give you an example. There was a New York Times article last month, and the New York Times is well positioned for all the infra inside sources and information from commercial real estate on Wall Street and all the big lawyers and law firms, because that's where a lot of this stuff is going to end up. 
and bankruptcies and mortgage workouts and things like that. The lawyers, listen to the lawyers. They're going to tell you what's actually happening. And that's what the New York Times reported. But before I get into that, I just wanted to let you know Eurodollar University is having its anniversary sale right now. Our best prices that we've offered since we launched our service, all the memberships and subscriptions we have available. We've got bundle deals, we've got annual deals, memberships that are background material on the Eurodollar system, the daily deep dive analysis where we go much deeper behind all the stuff we talk about on here on YouTube. The daily briefing that keeps you caught up on everything that happens every day, macro and money, all of the stuff, all the information, sales, the sale prices and everything at our website, eurodollar.university. Now to the New York Times Insider reports, quote, there is a lot more trouble coming, said Mark Silverman, a partner and leader of the CMBS special servicer group at the law firm Lock Lord who represents lenders in disputes with commercial mortgage borrowers. Quote again, if we think it's bad now, it's going to get a lot worse. And I think most people had that sense, but again, to hear it from an inside source at this stage of the game and this changing stage of the game, as we'll see, it just confirms what a lot of us have suspected all this time, that there is a lot more happening and there's a lot more that's going to happen. And there's a lot more that needs to happen to get through this massive bust in commercial real estate. Some of the data we've got shows that CMBS um, delinquency rate for office loans and commercial mortgage-backed securities are up to 7% compared to 4% last year, which again, just confirms everything that we're talking about. There are reports that, that, at least according to this one, 30 office towers in Dallas, New York, San Francisco, and Washington, whose loans are part of the commercial mortgage-backed securities, were in foreclosure in April. That's April which is up from a dozen in early 2023. And that's according to the source TREP. So more than double, actually two and a half times last year. And it's only going to continue getting worse because the economy is not getting better. The financial environment is not getting any better. If anything, both of those are materially worse, which means that all of the problems that we've been looking at and common sense told you was going to be a major issue, starting with all the bubble assumptions back in 2021 that have proven to, be, to, have, proven to have been faulty already, we know that there's going to be a whole lot that needs to shake out. Revaluations, revalues, and lots of losses that need to be assigned. And if we're lucky, hopefully spread out wide enough that it doesn't lead to some form, some form of systemic setback. No, we don't want there to be a massive, a massive impact on the general economy. There's going to be some impact on the economy. We don't want the massive stuff. But to get to the massive stuff, that would mean when we see a lot of anxious uncertainty, but behind that, you see a lot of sort of I don't know, panicky behavior, heading for the exits, selling just to sell, getting the hell out of Dodge while you still can, just in the in the uh, in the hopes that you'll be one of the first ones out because, you know, the rest of everybody, once they see the same things that you do, they're going to want to head for the exits, too. That's the sort of systemic downside that we're trying to avoid. And that's the systemic downside that continues to come up, at least around the edges. What I'm talking about here, quote, the banks are going to a select number of brokers and saying, I don't want this to be public. Now, that was according to Jay Neveloff, who the New York Times describes as the head of real estate legal practice at Kramer Levin. And what he was saying is that banks are indeed selling, but they don't want that to, make, to be made public because they don't want to trigger the stampede. They're trying to get out while they still can because the implication here is they want to get out and they want to get out now before everyone else does. That's, that's what, see what I mean? That's not a necessarily a good sign. It's not really a good sign at all because if there was a functioning marketplace where you're relatively confident that this is all going to be nothing, then you wouldn't mind just selling into the marketplace. Not necessarily making everything you do public, but not making not making sure that what you are doing doesn't ever be made public. And that's really the point here. They're, they're going an extra mile to keep things very quiet. Not a good sign. Michael Hamilton, one of the heads of the real estate practice at O'Melvaney and Myers, said he had been involved with a number of deals in which banks were quietly giving borrowers a year to find a buyer for a property even if it meant a building was sold at a substantial discount. 
He said that the banks were interested in avoiding a foreclosure, avoiding a foreclosure, and that borrowers benefited by getting to walk away from a mortgage without owing anything. And they were willing to take some losses so long as it didn't go through that public process. As Hamilton said, what I've been seeing is the cockroaches are starting to come out. The general public does not have a sense of the severity of the problem. And if, if what he says is true, and we have no reason to suspect it's not, if banks were giving property owners a year because they thought the environment would pick up, the, the economy would actually be strong and resilient, like everyone says, uh, maybe the Fed would start cutting interest rates and rates were going lower and it would be easier to work out some of these loans. So they gave everybody a year. But where, was, where did that year start and where does it end? And what we're saying here, what we're seeing here is that year is likely up. That banks have been patient all along. They've been willing to extend and pretend for quite some time, but they don't see an end. They don't see a magical fix that will get everyone out of this in the easiest way possible. They're starting to move because they're becoming increasingly concerned that this is not going to go as smoothly as everyone had hoped. When you start extending and you start pretending, the idea is that after enough time, you're really just buying time, everything works out really well on the other side. And now that we've get, gotten to the other side, and that's increasingly what we're seeing in the, these inside sources as well as the data, as we're getting to the other side, it doesn't really look any better. In many respects, it looks a lot worse. So let's put some statistics behind these inside reports. And there's a lot more of them that are out there, and there are more that are going to be coming out there. But as far as hard data, we have the Federal Reserve's H8, which is the aggregate balance sheets of all of the U.S. banks that report to the Federal Reserve. And what it shows is a clear change in trend in commercial real estate loans on the books of U.S. banks. A clear change in trend. Now, the numbers itself or the numbers themselves don't sound all of that all that impressive, but it's not the numbers at this stage. It's the fact that the trend has clearly changed. If you look at total commercial real estate loans among all U.S. banks, big as well as small and all the medium regionals in between, the amount of commercial real estate loans that they're reporting on a seasonally adjusted basis, according to the Federal Reserve, they're down $12.4 billion since the week of May 8th. And again, $12.4 billion doesn't seem like a lot, and it really isn't, but that's not the point here. We're seeing the emergence of a change in trend. And that change in trend roughly coincides with the rally in U.S. Treasuries, which makes sense, you know, increased demand for safety and liquidity. And it also covers this period from insider reports. And it's more than just a week or two. Now we're, we're talking about several weeks, which means that this is not likely some statistical problem with the seasonal adjustments. This is more than likely a real change in trend. Something has substantially changed, according to these insiders, as well as the data. When we dig a little bit deeper into that data, what we see is that, first of all, construction and land development commercial real estate loans. That trend change may go back to the final week in March, March, the week of March 27, which was the first week of contraction. But it's unclear whether that initial dip was a real thing in the banking system or some statistical artifact or maybe disc discontinuity in the data because there's a little bit of an uptrend after that initial dip. But either way, what we see is just like the total for commercial real estate loans on banks' books, the drop here accelerates around the first week in May. In all of this, the timing going back to March does coincide with what we've seen from, for example, construction, especially multifamily construction, which is a part of this bank lending or the, the category that we're examining here in CRE bank loans. Permits and starts for multifamily projects have absolutely plummeted, which is an acknowledgement among builders, first of all, of the macroeconomic climate. They know that their prospective renters or customers have no money and it's only getting worse, not better. And they also know that if... What we're seeing here likely is true. Banks are becoming much more difficult to, to work with. It's harder to get financing. So construction data, construction activity or future construction activity has fallen way off. I mean, we're some of the lowest, no, lowest estimates for both permits and starts of the last more than decade, going all the way back to the last housing bust. So that's one thing. We see the change in trend here in multifamily construction, which is one of the one of the areas that we were going to focus on, we knew to focus on from the very beginning. 
But the bigger one that we keep coming back to, office properties. In terms of the H-8 statistics, these are categorized as commercial real estate loans secured by non-farm, non-residential properties. So it could be a broader, a broader category than just office properties, but office towers, that's the big one where everything's starting to go wrong. And this segment is much larger than the development loans. We're talking about 1.8 trillion, 1.8 trillion. And that's just the loans that are on the books that the H-8 data covers. And again, what you see is a very clear change in trend, a very clear change in trend that same week, the week after May 8th. So as treasuries are rallying, increased demand for safety and liquidity, the banking system has done something different. They're starting to reduce their exposure to commercial real estate loans, which means they're reducing their exposure in a number, in a variety of ways. And again, it doesn't sound like much just 7.7 .7 billion lower than the week of May 8th. That's the, as of the latest week at the end of June, but that's six weeks now that the change has persisted, which means it's not a statistical issue. This is something real that is happening in the banking system and we can see it in a number of ways. So we put all these together, so the insider reports, and there's a lot more that I, I didn't get to go over here, along with the Federal Reserve statistics, and it's very compelling evidence, very strong evidence. The commercial real estate bust has moved from extend and pretend, still gonna be some extending and pretending, but a lot less. We're into the second phase where things are starting to really move. And as I keep saying, and I'll continue to say this until the evidence shows conclusively otherwise, this could still go relatively well. Losses will get assigned, some sleepless nights for a lot of overextended, highly leveraged people, but banking and money pull through, the economy suffers no more than a moderate setback, maybe a moderate further setback than it already does, and that's it. The problem is we still don't have near enough information and that is itself a red flag. No one is coming out and saying, we're done, we've done our homework, we feel perfectly fine, we'll get through this. There have been no reports of banks stating we've got nothing to worry about, I mean, other than the big banks and their stress tests. The smaller tier banks, the regional banks, they haven't come out and said, we're perfectly fine. We're totally confident this is gonna work out great because they know they're gonna be held to those statements. So the fact that they're not giving us information is itself a red flag. And the second thing is the transactions that are taking place and the actions surrounding them, the, the inside information we get from the lawyers, they aren't inspiring much or any confidence. The first movers are all moving fast to the exits and they're keeping it quiet, which is another red flag too. And the only real reason why they try to keep everything so quiet is because they're afraid of triggering the stampede. And the reason why they'd be afraid of triggering a stampede is because we're talking about more of the adverse scenarios. And if we're talking more about the adverse scenarios, that means a whole lot else that we need to keep paying attention to. But what we can safely say right now is that the commercial real estate bust is indeed in phase two. As all of this is going on in commercial real estate, the US economy is behaving even more recessionary. Talk about worse timing. And I talked about that in the video link below. As always, thank you for joining me. Check out Eurodown University's anniversary sale. Big thanks to Eurodown University subscribers and members and all you new members and subscribers. And until next time, take care.